Biology at the University of Cologne in Germany and went on to do his PhD at the National University of Singapore doing the developmental genetics research in zebrafish. He started his corporate career coordinating clinical trials at the German Hospital Consortium and later worked as the Global Product Manager for Kaijen's PCR portfolio. He then returned to Singapore to represent the German biotech startup Eyoxa in APEC and eventually joined TWIST where he is now working as our application specialist for our synthetic biology portfolio comprising of genes, oligo pools and DNA variant libraries. Our second speaker for today is Jay Yang. Jay received his PhD in biochemistry from the University of Toronto in Canada in 2012, where his research work contributed to a better understanding in genome stability and DNA double-stranded brick repairs. After graduation, Jay joined Single Instrument as a scientific advisor, helping labs automate workflows for strain engineering and drug screening in microbial organisms. In 2017, Jay worked as a market development manager at Thermo Fisher Scientific, promoting bioscience outlighting solution to biotech and pharma companies. Jay is now a business development manager at Twist Biopharma, a division of Twist Bioscience, where he establishes partnership agreements with biologics developers to accelerate therapeutic antibody discovery and <laughs> optimization. So without further ado, let us welcome Ben to start his presentation. Ben, please. All right. Uh, thank you, Eileen, for the introduction. I hope you can all hear me. Give me a sign if you can or cannot. I think that should work. Um, yeah, I would like to sincerely welcome each of our participants to this webinar. And I hope it's not too late to wish you all a very happy new year. To start off, I would like to show you a particularly exciting screenshot from our website. Because just like all scientists, we at TWIST love to brag about our publication record, which as of Christmas stands at almost 1,500 publications. And with an increase of some 75% just in 2021, these numbers also visualize the steep trajectory at which we grew our footprint in the global scientific community. This is one of the most important slides I'm showing you today. It shows the core of twist manufacturing, our twist silicon platform. As all DNA synthesis methods, like the low throughput solution in 96 well format shown on the left, our DNA synthesis is still based on the very well established 30 year old phosphoamidine chemistry. However, in contrast to other platforms, our engineers were able to place more than 1 million spots of oligonucleotide synthesis on these wafers. This degree of miniaturization enables the game changing scale of DNA synthesis throughput. And we are not just changing the game with respect to throughput. Twist DNA oligos are also characterized by industry leading quality in terms of a very high coupling efficiency that guarantees 100% oligo representation, a very high uniformity, that means over 90% of oligos in a given pool or production batch are represented within the very narrow bandwidth of not more than 2.5x from the mean. And also an industry leading low error rate of on average only one mismatch per two to 3000 nucleotides. And using these as a build building blocks for our libraries enable highest possible quality products with unmatched present representation between variants. The oligos from the wafer are the basic building blocks for all the products in our portfolio. They ship as oligo pools, of course, after a thorough quality control to support high throughput applications such as genome wide CRISPR screens. They're used to assemble our gene fragments and clonal genes. They're modified to serve as probes for our comprehensive NGS portfolio. And uh, we also venture into more exotic new business areas such as DNA based data storage. Of course, the libraries we're going to talk about today are also based on our oligo pools and our bio 
pharma vertical that Jay will present to you all later on is leveraging on the superior quality of these libraries, offering full service solutions towards therapeutic development for the pharmaceutical industry. Here are the main advantages of our libraries at a glance. So in terms of flexibility and precision, our variants are printed to reflect design input base by base. And with this, we replace the randomness of conventional approaches by superior precision, diversity, and uniformity. So there are no concerns about over or under representation of individual variants. And this full control over the DNA sequences ensures that there are no stop or unwanted codons, no unwanted restriction sites, no undesired data type motifs, and the precise codon ratio control at every position with optimal codon usage for each expression host. So, and the superior quality are also talked about earlier already means that we have this industry leading low error rate of DNA synthesis, a very high uniformity of the variant distribution and full NGS based QC documentation, which documents the percent ratio of um, amino acid variation at each position. We have also flexible delivery formats options available to meet all your needs. At the moment, our twist DNA variant library portfolio comprises of three library formats. First of all, the site saturation variant libraries or short SSDLs. They're based on, uh, on a wild type protein open reading frame. Each variant contains one precise single codon substitution, one position at a time by all 20 codons or just a subset chosen by the user. Codon optimization allows for perfect adoption to any required expression system. And classic applications for these libraries are enzyme optimization projects, whereby the library is functionally screened for beneficial variants, for example, enhanced catalytic activity, uh, also known as targeted evolution or site-directed mutagenesis screens. They also help to gain basic understandings of key amino acid positions or motifs or help to map an epitope. Next, the combinatorial variant libraries, short CVLs. Here, the variants differ by precise codon substitutions combined in all positions in a given domain. The variants can consider uh, uh, consist of several of such domains and total diversity of these libraries is as much is much higher due to the combinatorial nature. It can be up to 10 to the power of 10 variants, that is 10 billion. I will focus more on these CPLs in the remaining part of the webinar and also discuss a use case. Uh, but before, uh, let me come to the third, uh, which is the spread out low diversity or short sold library. This is a subtype of a CVL designed for enzyme evolution projects again. Here, the variants differ by precise codon combined codon precise and combined, sorry, codon substitutions scattered along the entire open reading frame. These souls are often used subsequently to identifying the most interesting residues in an SSVL based screening enzyme optimization. Naturally, in most cases, combining these positions leads to identifying variants with yet higher scoring and functional screenings than single substitutions. Okay, talking about combinatorial variant libraries now in more detail. As mentioned before, CVLs are characterized by their a very high complexity of up to 10 billion variants that results from the combined substitutions of multiple residues in each variant domain. A simple math experiment exemplifies this. If you wanted to represent the full diversity space of a motif of just five consecutive, consecutive amino acids, whereby all 20 amino acids are represented in each of the five positions, you would look at 20 to the power of five variants, which translates to 3.2 million variants. If you add just one additional position to the motif, and you are already looking at a resulting diversity space of 64 million variants. Handling such enormous variant numbers calls for high quality library manufacturing technology, and this is where we come into play. We enable precise user-defined codon control of diversity 
codons and ratios. For an improved screening experience, we can also exclude predicted motives with developability liabilities from the variant pool. Such motives often lead to detection of false positives during screening. Rules of the human repertoire can also be applied to avoid immunogenicity. Modular fabri fabrication strategy facilitates choice of framework, single or multiple germlines or user defined. Library composition and diversity is verified via full NGS-based quality control. The most basic delivery format is, is as a pool of linear variants. However, we can also offer the next step and clone the variants into any vector of choice, for example, a Fajimid vector. Upon request, we can even go one step further and deliver the primary transformants so you can jump into your screening campaign right away. The graph on the right shows the level of detail at which you, a user can design the amino acid composition of variants at each amino acid position. It, is also, it also exemplifies how the actual quality of the libraries follows even the most complex designs. Note that each position in the graph is represented by two bars. The left bar shows the design input the right bar represents the NGS-based QC, showing the actual amino acid composition at each position. The, sorry, the number one use case uh, for our CVLs is antibody development and optimization based on phage display technology. Here, the variant domains of a CVL represent the three complementarity determining regions on the heavy and light chain of an IgG. These CDRs determine the binding uh, specificity of an antibody. Variation in these domains changes the binding characteristics of an antibody. To screen for novel binders to a target protein, scientists use our high-diversity CVLs cloned into phagimid vectors. The resulting phages carry the expressed uh, binding per domains on their surface while bearing the coding DNA in their viral bodies. The invention of this clever system was awarded with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry to George Smith and Sir Gregory Winter in 2018. At Twist, we manufacture the highest quality and highest diversity libraries. We start off by synthesizing oligonucleotides to represent the diversity of each variable domain or the CDR region. By subsequent ligation of these oligos into the antibody backbone, we completely recombine each variant domain with each other to create the vast complexity. The example here shows, if we recombine 1000 variant oligos for CDR1 with 1000 variant oligos for CDR2 and with another 10,000 variant oligos for the CDR3, we end up with a variant library consisting of 10 to the power of 10 Again, these 10 billion variants. For optimal CDR design, users can also design the sequences to match the natural CDR design, remove liabilities, as already mentioned, follow a rational sampling from the desired sequence space. Uh, due to this way of building the libraries, accurate representations, e.g. motif sequences, can be encoded in the oligos. Another noteworthy mention deserves a specific design input format, the defined ratio CVL. As the name suggests, users can submit their design by defining percent ratio representations of amino acids for every position within a variant domain. This is a very helpful tool for those scientists who already obtained a good understanding of naturally occurring codon ratios derived from a thorough analysis of B-cell sequencing data. With this option, they are given the ability to include such information and thereby design libraries with a significantly higher degree of natural sequence space resemblance. As shown by the graph on the right, the resulting library will follow the design input precisely, which is just a graphic interpretation of the values in the table on the left. This graph is actually taken from a real NGSQC report and shows how close the variant residue composition in the right column at each position follows the design input on the left. Our precision CVLs are a tool 
used for the next phase of antibody development, which is antibody optimization. Once a binder is identified in a discovery project, it often makes sense to further optimize it to either increase its binding affinity or any other characteristic, also referred to as affinity maturation. To achieve this, we generate libraries with uh, rather soft mutations. This means the variants will carry only a limited amount of codon substitutions to still resemble the character of its parent, but enable to explore all possible variation in the closest sequence space around it. Hereby, users have the choice to select the variant domains as well as the desired selection of substitution codons. Additionally, they can also select to have only single, double, and or triple mutants involved. Importantly, when I say mutant, I mean a defined codon substitution using this user-selected codon table optimized for the expression host. The case study discussed in the second half of my presentation will present an example of the application of such a precision library. Stay tuned for that. An additional feature to point out about the precision CVLs is that we also take care of the uniformity aspects. Naturally, when assembling a library of, uh, out of single, double, and triple mutants, the triple mutants would highly overrepresent. In our precision CDLs, um, the triple mutants are being downsampled to match the total number of double mutants. This results in a far better balance of various kinds of mutants. The numbers above are an example for a CDR3 domain in a precision library. Note that downsampling of the triple mutants to match the number of double mutants leads to a total of some 10,000 variants from this domain. The combination with the other variant domains will again lead to a very highly diverse library with up to 10 billion variants. NGS-based QC confirms the presence of all variants in the final library. It also confirms the uniformity distribution. The graph on the right shows an example of a precision CVL QC report. In an attempt to build libraries that resemble the natural sequence space, as close as possible, we added another special feature to the toolbox, length variation variant domains. In IgGs, the naturally observed heavy chain CDR3 repertoire is characterized by a variation of length. Our CVLs can resemble this natural repertoire and users can request not only the length of the variants, but also the relative ratios. The graph on the right shows again um, a screenshot from a QC report and shows an example for such a ratio distribution. It compares the requested ratios with the NGS observed actual ratios. Note how close the actual libraries sticks to the original design input. Earlier in this, represent, uh, in this presentation, we discussed how recombination of variant codons along consecutive positions leads to this enormous vastness of the variant space. Considering the length of a CDR region, you may wonder how we can cover such complexity within single variant domains without exceeding the oligosynthesis limit of our writers. The answer is seamless assembly. Our scientists have developed a reliable method to seamlessly ligate adjacent oligos together and to thereby take advantage of combinatorial effects to create variant domains with the highest diversity. First, domains are split into multiple oligosets, then the respective oligosets are printed and spliced together. The example on the left shows how three sets of oligos with a total number of 8,000 plus 400 plus 1,600, so that's a total number of 10,000 oligos, suffices to generate a variant domain with 5 times 10 to the 9, that is 5 billion unique variants. This is how we can cater to library designs of highest complexity even within single variant domains. All right, coming to the case study now. This is a story about an assay body optimization project published by Rezan Güler and colleagues in Nature Scientific Reports back in 2020 with the title, Increasing Thermal Stability and Improving Therm Biodistribution of VEGFR2 Binding Assay Body Molecules by a Combination of In Silico and Directed Evolution Approaches. This story has also been formatted into an easier read in the form of an application note that can be freely accessed on our website. Here we call it 
enhancing the therapeutic properties of a cancer-targeting Afrobody by soft mutagenesis with combinatorial variant libraries. To start off, we need to understand what is an Afrobody. Here you see the lineup of the most commonly used binders for diagnostic and therapeutic applications today. Besides the IgGs, that has a total weight of 150 kilodalton. There are its direct derivatives to the left, the FAB and the SCFV. To the right, there is the famous YAMA immunoglobulin that only carries heavy chains and its little derivative, the VHH, that only weighs 15 kilodalton, which is just one tenth of an IgG. Yet smaller still is the afribody. It consists of only three loops and weighs only six kilodalton. It is characterized by a variety of advantages, such as higher robustness, higher pH tolerance, higher temperature tolerance, and better cell membrane permeability. In our case, permeability is not a big issue, as the afribody we're talking about here is a very specific binder to the VEGF receptor. It has already experimentally proven its high binding affinity and its in vitro angiogenesis blocking uh, properties. However, experimental outcome has also shown a relatively poor thermostability, a propensity to aggregate due to poor uh, refolding, as well as poor biodistribution as evident by an increased uptake in the liver and the spleen. So the scientists looked for a way to optimize these characteristics without negatively impacting existing high binding affinity of the target. When considering a DNA variant library approach, a screen uh, and to screen a large number of variants, there are a couple of things to consider. Hereby, the degree of mutagenesis is an important parameter to consider and which should be customized for the specific application and purpose of the library. If the library is meant to be used to identify completely new binders for a given target protein, it makes sense to go with a complete or close to complete mutagenesis. In such a library, a very wide diversity spectrum of variants is created to have the potential to contain binders with specificity towards a high diversity of targets. We also call such CVLs discovery libraries as they are being used to discover binders for new targets ab initio. On the other hand, if the library is meant for an optimization project whereby a binder is already identified and it just uh, needs some tweaking to improve one or several of its characteristics, one would rather use a soft mutagenesis approach. As already explained in the precision library part, a soft mutagenesis library keeps the degree of mutagenesis very limited to not more than three codon substitutions per variant to, li uh, to create a library of relatively close relativeness to of the parent binder. Importantly, such libraries can be as diverse as the discovery libraries with also up to 10 billion variants. But the close proximity to these variants ensures that they explore the narrow sequence space around the parent for more subtle improvements of its characteristics. Hence, for the purpose of the optimization project, in this case, Guler and colleagues designed uh, a relatively soft precision CVL. Here we see the actual library layout they designed for this project. For the heterodimeric pair of assay bodies, we call them 216 and 240, they identified a subset of 13 residues only in helix one and helix two uh, to be targeted for mutagenesis. As helix 3 is mainly responsible for the binding specificity and affinity, it was kept conserved. Variant positions exclude hydrophobic cysteine and proline residues. The soft mutagenesis approach here also meant that only variants with single, double, and triple codon substitutions were synthesized. The final complexity of each library hence was 2.5 times 10 to the power of 5, um, or 250,000. Here's an image of the everybody structure. It visualizes roughly where the variant positions are situated along the helices 1 and 2. The screening workflow looked as follows. First, 
the variants were cloned into surface expressing vectors um, and plasmids were transformed into Staphylococcus carnosus by uh, electroporation. The culture was incubated with fluorescently labeled targets and sorted for binding variants using fax. This was repeated several rounds for enrichment and the affinity and specificity was determined by flow cytometry. Isolated uh, recombinants were DNA sequenced and the top candidates were functionally characterized. The first part of the functional characterization was to determine the binding affinity of the top 12 new binders. As already suggested by their strong fax signal, surface plasma and resonance data confirmed binding affinities compared to their parent proteins, here shown as the original. The rate scale plots show the on and off rates of the binding events that show comparable values for both the 16 as well as the 40 derived variants. Next, the thermal stability and affinity of monomer variants Sorry, next, the thermal stability of monomer variants identified by a selection with FUX was determined by circular dichroism spectroscopy. The, the graphs show the fraction of unfolded protein as a function of temperature. The further the curve is shifted to the right, the higher the thermal stability of the antibody. Sorry, the antibody, of course. Here, the antibodies show a range of increased thermal stability over their parent. Further on, for enhanced thermal stability, the scientists used a dual approach. They also subjected the original binder sequence to an in silico optimization approach at the protein repair and uh, one stop shop or short PROS. The URL is attached uh, in the slide. This is a specific protein stability improvement algorithm come up by scientists at the Weizmann Institute in Israel that helped to identify four additional beneficial codon substitutions. They synthesized the gene coding for the new variant with the PROS recommended changes. And indeed, they identified a significant improvement in thermal stability as evident by the shift of the dashed line relative to the dotted line. Next, they combined the beneficial variants precisions sequences from both approaches, the PROS and the TWIST CDL, and called it the third generation variant. The resulting protein showed an even higher thermal stability compared to the PROS only variant. See the black line. The next set of functional characterization assessed the refolding capability. CD spectroscopy revealed that the original dimer on the left refolded only incompletely after a heating and cooling cycle. You can see that the spectral curve of the binder after heating does not show a perfect overlay to the curve of the binder before heating. When looking at the PROS variant, it looks more or less the same as the original, which shows that the beneficial modifications predicted by the algorithm alone did not improve the refolding capability of the binder. However, when looking at the third gen protein, the two curves show a perfect overlay, which indicates complete refolding after the heating and cooling cycle. Eventually, Gula and his colleagues ran a set of in vivo experiments to assess the biodistribution characteristics of the new binders. They also tested how the fusion of an albumin binding domain, short ABD, to the AFI body would improve, further improve biodistribution. Therefore, they labeled the different binder variants uh, with radioisotopes and injected them into mice that were then subjected to MRI scans at two time points. It was evident that the ABD attachment led to significant improvement of biodistribution throughout the mouse's body as it could be quantified at significantly higher levels in the various organs. Dimers conjugated with ABD circular, circulated in blood 20-fold longer and thus had a higher activity uptake in all assessed organs except for the kidneys. Importantly, and sadly not shown in this graph, compared to the original binder, the third-gen ABD showed 
13-fold lower accumulation in the liver and the spleen, consistent with the improved protein stability and refolding data not shown. In summary, the optimized binder is characterized by an improvement of thermal stability of over 15 degrees Celsius, an optimal refolding properties, and a resulting 13-fold lower accumulation in the liver and the spleen. In the case study shows the utility of twist CVLs for binding protein optimization. And this concludes my part of the webinar, and I'm happy to pass on the microphone to my colleague, uh, colleague Jay now. I look forward to discussing all open questions with you all during the Q&A part later on. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Berend. Uh, so let's continue to the second half of this webinar. Um, and uh, we'll be talking to you about uh, what services that we offer at our biopharma division within Twist um, Bioscience. Um, so we've uh, learned from them that you know, we can leverage our library's technology uh, to accelerate antibody uh, development. And um, if you do not wish to do such work in-house on your own, uh, if you're looking for extra capacity, then you know, we uh, at Biopharma also offer services for antibody discovery and antibody optimization, and also created some, uh, some resources that would really help you accelerate your internal and antibody uh, pipelines. <clears throat> so this is a uh, diagram demonstrating where our biopharma team can add value to your antibody um, development pipeline. Uh, at Twist Biopharma, we have uh, developed a resource for antibody discovery. We call this a library or library uh, resource where we can uh, uh, discover high quality antibodies um, against virtually any target that's out there. We also develop a proprietary platform called Twist Antibody Optimization or TAU uh, that enables us to optimize a lead antibody uh, for improving its uh, potency and also developability. At the moment, uh, Twist Biopharma does not have its own internal pipeline. It does not do any target discovery and validation. It also does not do downstream uh, animal studies, uh, CMCs, or clinical trials. So our business model is to partner with um, companies, um, pharmaceutical companies, and help them accelerate uh, their pipeline. The Biopharma program was started in 2018. So at the time, our co-founder and CEO, Dr. Emil Proust, uh, recruited uh, Dr. Aaron Sato, our current CSO, to start our biopharma program. And uh, Aaron uh, was well known in, the, in this particular field uh, before he joined uh, Twist. He was the CSO of Lake Pharma, and he also spent time at Sutros, Diax, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> The purpose of our Twist Biopharma uh, is to help uh, discover and optimize antibodies for various applications. Um, when it comes to monoclonal antibodies or the nanobodies, uh, we are able to certainly help uh, discover those uh, antibodies. Uh, Twist Biopharma can also help uh, discover and optimize antibodies for use for bispecifics or multispecifics. Uh, at the same time, you know, Twist Biopharma was, uh, also has great resource to help the discovery of uh, antibodies that are used in cell therapies, such as CAR-T and TCR. <clears throat> Although the Twist Biopharma program is relatively young, only three uh, years uh, old, uh, we've already have uh, roughly t uh, around 25 to 30 partners um, around uh, the, uh, the globe. Um, so those partners range, uh, range from uh, small startups like uh, companies that, less, that have less than maybe 10 scientists 
all the way to multinational uh, pharmaceutical corporations such as Takeda, Kira Kidding, and Boinger Ingelheim. Uh, these companies are mainly focused on immuno-oncology uh, and cancer therapeutics. Uh, however, we also have partners uh, that work on autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. <clears throat> And um, uh, as Bern has mentioned, uh, um, uh, for Twist Biopharma, we use phage display uh, as a, a screening technology uh, to discover and optimize antibodies. Um, the real innovation comes from the way we generate what we call the precision DNA libraries. Um, um, because you know, we're actually uh, uh, able to synthesize a huge uh, quantity of DNA molecules, we're not really limited by uh, the sequences that we can access to, we're able to generate uh, high quality precision DNA libraries uh, with base by base precision. So we literally print um, uh, 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 you know, all the sequence base by base. This really allows us to have full control of the codon usage, uh, full control of the amino acid uh, distribution at each position. And uh, because uh, we're actually printing oligo pools to generate those libraries, uh, we're also able to specifically control the combinatorial diversity within each library. <clears throat> As Bernard mentioned, we're also very uh, able to very easily encode the CDR length into our libraries and then also encode those uh, CDRs onto multiple different genome scaffolds uh, for us to investigate. And then lastly, uh, we are able to remove uh, unwanted restriction sites and also uh, unwanted um, uh, dipeptide motifs out of our uh, libraries, uh, which in turn will enable us to uh, develop, uh, discover leads that have higher uh, developability. And uh, of course, we do NGSQC to control all of our libraries. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, just to reiterate, you know, the, the fact that we are able to uh, synthesize uh, oligo sequences uh, one by one to generate oligo pools and to use those three oligo pools to build a antibody discovery libraries. We're really able to, um, you know, build the libraries uh, with the diversity that match the natural CDR repertoires. Uh, we're also able to remove uh, various uh, manufacturing liability motifs such as isomeration, cleavage, deamination, and glycosylation site. Um, and more importantly, uh, if we want to introduce external motifs into our libraries, uh, we can also uh, do so. And then in fact, you know, we have been using this strategy to uh, uh, generate libraries um, that are specific to a particular hot drug target class, like GPCR and, and ion channel. And um, that's why, you know, like, you know, we at Twist, Biopharma generated uh, the, the libraries or what we call the synthetic 40 human libraries because they are all like you know, 40 human sequences that are devoid of manufacturing liabilities. So in the genesis of these uh, sequences will be much lower and also the developability for those sequences will be much higher. <clears throat> so we're actually uh, using this core technology of uh, the way we build our libraries to develop two uh, platforms or two, uh, two asset. One is what we call the library of libraries, uh, enabling a novel drug discovery, particularly against those hot to drug targets, such as GPCR, ion channel, and carbohydrates. On the other hand, we also uh, develop a proprietary software called the TAL, Twist Antibody Optimization Platform, uh, to um, enable the optimization uh, of antibodies by improving various uh, its, uh, properties. Uh, from affinity to half-life to reducing immunogenicity to improving drug, drug ability and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, I will now um, take some time to introduce our library of libraries um, platform uh, for novel drug discovery. And I will also uh, follow that with a, a brief introduction about our TAL uh, platform. <clears throat> so this slide really uh, summarizes uh, the vision of what Aaron wants to uh, like achieve with our biopharma program. And so as you know, there are also other discovery companies that leverage face display technology for drug uh, discovery. Um, those companies usually will only have one library or maximum two you know, at their disposal. And then they will actually uh, use the same library uh, over and over and over again 
uh, for different uh, projects against different targets. And the downside of using that approach is that um, the quality of the antibody that you discovered against a particular target it really limits by uh, the breadth and depth of that particular one library. And because each target is also different, um, you know, we can't say that you know, one library uh, will suit all different projects. So at Twist Biopharma, our vision is to create this resource called the Library of Libraries. Uh, so imagine on, on the bottom left um, a slide uh, where you have a 96 well uh, deep well plate and each well actually contains a high diversity 10 to the 10th uh, phase display um, uh, DNA uh, antibody discovery libraries. And each library is actually designed based uh, on different uh, uh, design concepts uh, according to different uh, database and sometimes even designed uh, for a particular target. So once we receive a target of interest, we can pick one library um, um, that is the most suitable for this particular target, or we can choose multiple libraries uh, and um, screen the same target at the same time. Right? Uh, so this will uh, in, uh, enable us to uh, increase the success rate of any discovery uh, campaign. So uh, for transparency, we have not built hundreds of libraries at our disposal yet uh, because uh, our uh, program is still relatively uh, young, only three years old. However, we have already built 18 different libraries uh, uh, built and validated, which is shown on the screen right here. Uh, so if you look at the libraries on the top uh, row right here, uh, we, are, we call these libraries um, the general naive libraries suitable for uh, discovery against um, you know, most of the, the, the target that's out there. Uh, so from the left-hand side, uh, we have a hyperimmune library, uh, and that's actually built uh, in the FAT format. Um, so there's actually two versions of it. We have a version uh, called the original FAT that has diversity in both uh, heavy chain and light chain. And we also have a common light chain FAT version where we replace the diversity in the light chain uh, with a trastuzumab uh, light chain. Uh, so for our partners who are in interested in devel uh, developing uh, by specifics, right, the common light chain fab uh, hyperimmune library will be very uh, useful. And this particular library is actually built uh, out of the PPMC data uh, from three healthy uh, donors. And then we also have a, a VHH library series. We actually built five different uh, by, uh, libraries uh, uh, using the VHH uh, uh, kind of like framework. And uh, the interesting part is that you know, two of the five libraries were actually encoding uh, the VHH diversity onto the human framework. And this is, to my knowledge, um, the, the first uh, like humanized VHH libraries that's available kind of like in the, in the industry. And then you know, we also have four different SCAV libraries, each of which are actually built uh, according to different uh, uh, database and design concept. The bottom three libraries showing right here are what we call the target class specific libraries um, uh, for, because uh, we know that you know, using traditional approach, uh, it's very difficult to uh, discover antibodies against GPCR, against iron channel, and against carbohydrate. So we actually uh, you know, design specific libraries uh, for the discovery against those uh, targets. So all in all, you know, the collection of our library of libraries really enables us to discover uh, 40 human antibody sequences that are devoid of manufacturing liabilities. Uh, so that, you know, you will really reduce uh, the, um, the, the downstream development time uh, to, to reach the, the clinics. Um, many of these libraries are actually designed based on different um, uh, according to different database, and they actually focus on different uh, sequence uh, uh, space. Uh, that's why you know our uh, library library collection also enab enables you to discover the diversity that's much larger than what you could have discovered uh, from, say, a animal source. <clears throat> if you're interested in this particular re uh, resource, uh, there are two ways to uh, access it. Uh, you, if you have the internal screening capability, you can license our libraries and do the discovery uh, work uh, in-house uh, on your own. Uh, however, if you do not wish to do those uh, discovery work in-house, uh, 
we at Twist Biopharma can also perform uh, antibody discovery on your behalf. All you need to do, uh, do is to tell us your target of interest, and we can perform this eight-week cycle, uh, which includes uh, biopanning and screening, and uh, also IgG reformatting of the hits that's coming out from the, the screen, and uh, also high IgG purification to get purified full-length uh, antibody. Uh, then we can use those kind of like uh, full-length antibody to do uh, in vitro binding and functional assays. Okay, and now uh, I would like to sh uh, share two examples with you on uh, how we leverage our discovery platform uh, to discover some uh, what we believe are some uh, you know, novel drugs. Uh, first one is our uh, uh, exam uh, our experience in uh, discovering uh, antibodies against uh, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, so what we did is, uh, um, you know, in 2020, we've actually embarked on a a project to discover uh, antibodies against uh, uh, the new coronavirus, right? Either the uh, S1 uh, um, binding protein domain, um, receptor binding domain, or the ACE2 uh, kind of receptor. Uh, so what we did is, you know, we actually picked three different libraries uh, to screen those two targets. And uh, this is uh, what's uh, showing you know, after um, um, the biopanning. Uh, we performed ELISA to confirm ELISA positive uh, hits. And uh, so as you can see here, um, in this particular example, we're taking our VHH libraries uh, to do this particular screen, and we're able to uh, uh, pick out uh, quite a number of unique binders uh, from each of our VHH uh, libraries. And what we then do is we take those uh, hits and then reformat into VHHFC, purify them, and then perform a high throughput SPR uh, analysis uh, to um, to look at their binding affinity. Uh, so as shown here on the screen, there are many high affinity binders. You know, we often find like single digit nanomolar or even sub nanomolar uh, binders uh, from our screen against the S1 uh, protein. <clears throat> and uh, we then performed uh, a in vitro kind of like a uh, a study to demonstrate that these antibodies can actually inhibit um, the the virus from uh, you know, attaching to our human cells. So in this particular case, we're uh, taking S1 uh, RBD as a proxy to the SARS-CoV-2 virus itself, and then we're taking very E6 uh, cell that naturally express the ACE2 receptor on its uh, membrane. <clears throat> And then, you know, what we do next is uh, we actually take uh, those top binders and then we, uh, you know, did a kind of like an in vivo study. And we we're able to demonstrate that, um, you know, two of our top binders actually were very potent in the hamster model. Uh, so with uh, dosage as low as one meg per kg, we demonstrated that uh, our antibodies can prevent hamsters from developing COVID symptoms. And then now, you know, we actually uh, licensed uh, this antibody uh, to uh, this company called Reveler Biotherapeutics. And um, I think just recently, we last week or two weeks ago, we demonstrated that uh, we are actually taking those uh, antibody candidates and then build that into a bispecific. And then we're able to demonstrate that this bispecific, uh, we're able to neutralize uh, the Delta and Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, this is a very exciting uh, development. Uh, we still continue to, um, to, to, to um, look forward to seeing further development of this particular program. And then another example that I would like to share with you is our, uh, our uh, success in discovering uh, a very promising you know, oncology target called Adora2A. So Adora2A uh, is a checkpoint inhibitor uh, this is a very uh, high potential target, uh, but currently there are only small molecule candidates in clinical trials. No uh, antibody drugs currently being discovered. And the, the part of the reason why, uh, why this happened is because the RAT2A uh, is a GPCR uh, target. That's why it's very difficult to identify antibody drug against this uh, candidate, against this target. 
Uh, so what we're showing here is that you know, we're actually able to identify an antagonist against uh, a DORA 2A or A2A. So as shown on the left uh, side um, uh, graph here, uh, is where we demonstrate that this antibody has really high affinity against human A2A receptor. Uh, in the middle graph here is where we actually perform in vitro uh, assay and also using primary T cells to demonstrate that this antibody is a functional antagonist against uh, human A2A. And then in the right hand side here, we can see that uh, in a cross reactivity study, uh, this antibody not only interacts with human A2A, it also interacts with a mouse version of the A2A as well. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I want to change gear a little bit and talk about our briefly introduce about our uh, twist antibody optimization platform. Um, the beauty of this platform is that it actually can accept a, a variety of uh, antibody sequences uh, from 40 human sequences to 40 non-human sequences or any kind of like a partially humanized or chimeric sequences, anything in between. Um, once we receive the sequences, we're actually able to perform uh, affinity maturation and humanization, right, if it's a non-human uh, sequence uh, in, in one project in one go. Right, the project uh, length will take roughly around three months to complete, and uh, you will get 40 human sequences uh, with improved affinity, uh, and at the same time, remove uh, all the uh, devoid of all the manufacturing liabilities. So, how does this uh, how does this uh, kind of uh, tau platform work? Is that once we receive your sequence, right, we'll put that into our proprietary software. Behind the software is a really large a natural human antibody sequence database that we have access to. And uh, we're able to uh, put out relevant uh, 40 human CDRs based on your input uh, sequence and use those relevant 40 human CDRs to build a optimization library up to the 10, of, uh, 10 to the 10th diversity as well. And we can then you know, take those, uh, the optimization library and to perform that uh, eight week discovery cycle, right? use that to pam against your target to discover the optimized uh, antibodies. So uh, again, you know, just showing right here, once we receive your sequence, you know, we're able to uh, put our relevant uh, CDRs, fully human CDRs. Uh, we uh, you know, leverage our um, DNA uh, printing technology to print those uh, CDRs into oligo pools, build the libraries, and you know, we'll then screen the libraries uh, against the target of interest. Uh, we're able to demonstrate that uh, we're um, you know, able to optimize a parental antibody with initial um, binding affinity of 300 nanomolar uh, down to single digit nanomolar or 4.5. <coughs> And um, so we understand that uh, we're not, um, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, improving affinity uh, uh, is good, but it sometimes may not translate to uh, a functional activity improvement. So in this particular case, we actually take the top uh, binders uh, that we improved uh, out of our tau platform and then perform a, a functional assay. So it's a PD-1, PD-1 uh, blockade assay. And you know, we were able to demonstrate that um, the optimized antibody with improved affinity also showed a improved uh, functional act activity as well. <clears throat> okay, so um, so as we build our uh, kind of antibody uh, you know, biopharma program, we've actually performed quite a number of uh, proof of concept. Uh, studies uh, against various uh, targets we believe are actually higher value. Uh, we briefly talk about our DERA 2A um, and also uh, PD-1, um, but you know we also have some targets, interesting targets like GLP-1, our uh, CD3, uh, TIT, and CXCR4 that's out there. Uh, so we're also open uh, for collaboration uh, if you're interested in in licensing some of these leads uh, to develop those leads further. Okay, so to summarize, you know, uh, uh, Twist Biopharma has built uh, what we call, uh, what we believe is quite a unique uh, uh, capability for discovering and optimizing antibodies, right? So when it comes to the 
uh, the number of antibody sequences that we have access to. Uh, you know, we have a library of libraries that which enable us to uh, really investigate uh, antibody sequences or diversity space that were just not possible uh, using previous technologies. And we understand that sometimes the antibody discovery is also a numbers game. So the more sequence more sequences that we have access to, the better, the higher uh, chance that we can discover a, a, a right uh, sequence. But more importantly, uh, we're not just having more libraries. Uh, each libraries were actually uh, explicitly synthesized. There's zero, uh, no randomness uh, introduced into our libraries. So we can design our library uh, following uh, fully human, uh, natural human uh, antibody repertoire uh, so that uh, our libraries sequences are actually fully human. This is very important uh, for downstream development to reduce the immunogenicity and increase developability. And thirdly, uh, we actually automate and miniaturize many important uh, discovery uh, and uh, optimization processes uh, in-house uh, from uh, library uh, construction to screening to IgG reformatting and to uh, in vitro functional and uh, affinity testing. So this will ensure that you know, we uh, are able to reduce our uh, project time and also ensure the highest and consistent uh, quality that we deliver uh, in each project. Okay, so to summarize, there are many ways um, that uh, if you're interested in antibody uh, development, many ways to work with us. Uh, if you're interested in Twist Biopharma's library or libraries uh, platform, you can either license the libraries from us or you can engage us to do a, a discovery project on your behalf uh, with your target of interest. If you already have a lead uh, that you discover somewhere else, uh, we at Twist uh, can also help you optimize uh, the lead. Um, and um, But um, please don't forget, you, know, you can also design your libraries and they have our libraries mm -hmm. team to, uh, to do those kind of custom libraries uh, for you as well. And so, um, and uh, we're also um, having a high throughput IgG production um, that we can uh, will launch uh, uh, soon. So with that, thank you very much for your for your attention, and um, 